Hey guys, Chuck Bonanno here. I have taken over the Independent Dealer Podcast. I've got a couple friends here with me, Jeff and Luke, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, NIDA Education 20 Groups and my love of all, buy your payer. Chuck, we're so excited to have you here today. Guys, y'all have to listen to one of the best dealer educators out there today. We're going to go over a bunch of things. We're going to invite you to come to convention. We're going to invite you to join the 20 Group. So stick around and listen. Welcome to the Independent Dealer Podcast, the podcast for auto dealers to learn and grow together. Here are your hosts, Luke Godwin and Jeff Watson. Hey, welcome to this episode. We have Chuck here with us. Chuck, can you give us some introduction? Everyone's going to know you by name. We don't even need to give you a last name. People know who you are (laughs) if they have anything to do with the used car, independent dealer space. But real quick, give us just in a nutshell, who are you? Where did you come from? Well, uh, my name's Chuck Bonanno. You can just call me Chuck. Um, been in the used car world for about 30 years. I uh, got in the way most of us do. I went to college and got a finance degree and that really didn't work out so good. Got laid off from a job and my sister at that time had married a buy here, pay here dealer. Oh my. And uh, he said, I want you to come in and be my CFO. And I didn't know what buy here, pay here was. Um, that was in 1988, so we're now in our 31st year. Uh, we grew that company because that's what you did back in that day. We got a line of credit, one of the very first lines of credit in the United States for buy here, pay here dealers. We grew to seven stores, and in 1995, we went public. Um, and our real goal was to sell out and go away. Uh, it didn't really work out that way. My brother in law became the CEO of this publicly held buy here, pay here company. Um, we grew to as high as 27 stores. I ran our related finance company, had 54 collectors, 12 underwriters uh, working for me. And so really jumped into the business that way, kind of you know trial by fire. Uh, we sold that company to America's Car Mart in 1999, and I've been consulting ever since, um, doing moderating of 20 groups. Uh, I've had as many as 12 groups at one time, uh, which is a lot of travel. It's 36 meetings a year. Um, I've moderated 450 plus meetings at this point. Uh, I love the business, could never now imagine doing anything else. And I certainly love uh, the 20 group program and my most recent job with NIDA is I'm now the vice president of dealer development, which really makes me happy because my goal in life is if I can make more money and more successful dealers, then I'm a successful man. So that is awesome. I tell you, learning from you over the last two years that you've been moderating my group has just been, it's been amazing. Um, I, I had a, another moderator before and, and he was great too, but what you brought to the table of, of the buy here, pay here knowledge just really has increased my my knowledge of the industry and, and also what you've done with NIADA and, and the whole the whole group, the whole association has done to help our, you know, our business is, is amazing. We, we really appreciate you doing sure. that. Mm-hmm, definitely. And we want to, I want to talk and get your insights into the used car market sure. as it sits today. Maybe get some tips that the dealers can take home and put into their dealership, but also I mean, we definitely need to talk about 20 groups, right? Yeah. Luke, I think that was one of the big things that both you and I can, you know, we can say, hey, don't care what you do, where you go to, you need to get into a 20 group. It's going to, you're going to benefit. Sure. I, th- I think, and that's, you know, you, on, our, on our Facebook forum, you see a lot of times it, it, people ask questions that, Chuck, you know right off the top of your head, right? <laughs> and I know right off the top of my head, but the reason I know these things is because I'm lucky enough to be with my peers on a 20 sure. group and see that. What uh, what have you seen over the years? What are the benefits of the 20 group to a, a small dealer, to a large dealer? If you're only getting your information from a few blurbs online, or God forbid you're talking to people at the auctions, it, it, you just might as well just stop and turn it all off because all your competitors are lying to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned that early on when, when I was learning how to buy cars and one of the guys says, don't listen to what he says, look at what he buys. Because yeah. the guy with the biggest mouth was always buying the fewest cars or being called to the office because he bounced a check. <laughs> um, I, I would just tell you that there's no better program than a group of your peers that meets three times a year um, and who are very candid. I've got two of them right here, very candid with their members when they think you're screwing up and there's a better way. In many cases, they've tried things. They've tried products. They've tried services. They've tried strategies. They can tell you the consequences of those, and they're going to be honest with you. And and it's what's going on today. It's not my old days talking about 1988. I've got great war stories, 
but they're just that. They're not what's happening today. And, you know, uh, everything that you guys have done, you're successful business people, it's awesome what you've done. It got you here. It doesn't mean anything for tomorrow. You know, nothing that we do today may have any impact on what goes on in your futures. And our goal is to make every one of us successful. And those can be profitability issues from our composite as we look at them and see what our financial results are. Uh, they may be a succession plan or an exit strategy or a growth strategy um, or a need for capital. We, everybody in these rooms have been through that and will give you the advice and let you know quite candidly um, where you need to pay attention. I think, and you're so right, I think in today's um, market, because I think our market today is probably vastly different <laughs> than we've ever seen with mm -hmm. the, the rise of the franchise buy here, pay here store, the franchise independent stores, sure. um, CarMax, Carvana, all these things. If we don't have, you know, what happens to the people who don't have the 20 group and, and who don't have the ability to really depend on what the person next door is is telling us? What what do you see that dealer going through? Well, I would tell you, the, the, you know, the one thing that happened is I used to teach a class on how to get into buy here, pay here, and we would do pro formas of, of cash needs and portfolio growth and potential return on investment. And when I started doing that class in 2000, 2001, if you had a quarter million dollars or, or uh, access to a quarter million dollars, you could probably build a nice business. My joke today is that probably lasts you about three weeks. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, so, so that part of the business has changed a lot. So the capital requirements are tougher. Compliance was not even a word I even knew when I first got in this business. You know, it just kind of wheeled and dealed. We, everything was in cash, uh, down Legacy payments, cover costs, you know. <laughs> yeah. but, but today, it's, it's a very challenging business. If you've been in it for the last five years, these will, I would say from my experience, have been the hardest five years. So if you're doing okay, if you're doing well right now, congratulate yourselves. Um, but it's going to get more and more challenging to be competitive. Um, our customers are changing. Um, as as an old guy now in the business, I can tell you that what I saw in 1988 compared to what I see in, in 2019 has been a dramatic shift in uh, the customer. And it's not the customer credit quality. That has remained the same. But what has changed in, is their expectations. Some we brought upon them uh, with better cars and more expensive cars and better warranties and those type of things. But a lot of it is just the changing market and how our consumers view they can now call it mobility. It's oh, not right. called car buying anymore. <laughs> it's mobility. Well, that's a new word, right? That is it. You know, it's funny. And, and the buy here, pay here dealers probably done it to ourselves. You know, sure. we've we've gone after higher price cars, and and don't, don't get me wrong. I think drive time and people like that have moved the market on us. But uh, we we've made it more cash intensive mm -hmm. because uh, cars have gone up and down payments have gone down. Right. That's exactly right. My average down payment in 1988 was 875 dollars, <laughs> and then for a while, not too long ago, I was one buck chuck. So I'm part of the problem. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are part of the problem. But you know, these these big stores are, you know, they're 500 dollars down. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the subprime market out there has been, the, the money's been so free in the last five years that it's, it's taken a lot of our customers. And Jeff, I don't know if you see it in, in Utah like we do in the southeast, but it's, uh, it's tough. Yeah, 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 it's a race to the bottom sometimes. <laughs> well, one thing that really strikes me as Chuck was talking is, you know, my first 20 group was... It's been a while now. Seven years in this exact room, actually. Wow. okay. Exact hotel, exact room, <laughs> uh, which is kind of a funny thing, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, you don't know what you don't know yeah. and sure. used car dealers have the mentality that they know it all because that's why we're in this industry because we know everything and and you get those blinders on and you think I know the best way to buy a car I know the best way to retail I know the best way to mark up sure. I know the best way to do this but you don't yes. and that's what really struck me the hardest is when I got into this is I thought oh, I'm doing great I'm really killing it man I made a you know thousand dollars on each car that's what's great you know? about 20 group though is because it it humbles you and you figure out, I don't know everything. I mean, the first 20 group you walk into, oh, yeah. man, you it's get a big one. up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we need it. We need that. And you can tell who's going to succeed long term, I think. I mean, I've been in here. I've seen people come and go and come and go and come and go. And they come in and you think, hey, yeah, you know, you know, this isn't, you know, you think you've got it figured out right here. But you might want to look at it this way. Yeah. And the people that push back and say, no, 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 no. We've got that figured out. No, that's, that's the way we've done it for 20 years. All right, well, we'll, we'll see you at the next meeting, I don't think, because you might not be in business much longer. Or, you know, maybe, you know, what do you say to those people, Chuck, that think, hey, I've got nothing to learn, or I think I know it all. Yeah, I would tell you that um, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of your success that you've got to this point. But it's interesting is that whatever you've learned, uh, it's dynamic. This business is dynamic. The world is changing. Our consumers changing. Technology is changing. You better keep up or stay ahead of that. Um, you better have your capital in place. You better have your policies and procedures in place or you will lose. What is interesting, and Jeff, to your point, is we've seen a few come into the groups. We're like not going to be at the second meeting, but a lot of them, it takes them 10 meetings, which is a long time or 20 meetings to pardon big me, to die yeah. because buy your payer it's hard to kill a buy your payer operation because you've got cash yeah. coming in thank all god. the time and truly <laughs> to me thank god i always ask my retail dealer so if you sold no cars for the next 90 days what happens and they go i'm homeless mm-hmm. you know buy your payer we could afford yeah. to do that okay. um that's the beauty of it it's a wealth building uh business compared to a sales business um, yeah, we but, don't get a draft Ferraris up front. That's, that's no, <laughs> no. It's like everyone always says, and I get people who get in this business say like, all right, I've invested $2 million. Where is it? Yep, go, well, sure. it's driving around the streets of your town. Yep. I mean, it's not in your bank account. I sweat. I did payroll for 15 years, and I sweated it every Thursday Yeah. because mm-hmm. um, cash is tight in this business. Yep. Uh, it's going to get tighter. I mean, what I want people to understand is that there's a way to succeed without being drive time or carvana or america's car martin being these national or public companies out there but you got to find your niche you got to understand that that things are changing buying is changing i think the most interesting thing about buying that's come up recently mm-hmm. is um my one of my partners in michigan has seven stores he buys about 300 cars a month and he now has five kids on computers buying online and no buyers in the lanes anymore and i will promise mm-hmm. you someone's listening right now saying that's impossible but i can tell you he's been doing this for 35 years he goes our reject rate is lower now than it's ever been i've got friends that same thing they, they buy they buy 200 cars a month and they've got three people doing it just sitting in sitting in the office and that's mm-hmm. you know yeah. that's what they do and you couldn't have told me that five years no. ago i would have said no way is it because the options are better the cars are better or Technology's better. Yes. Technology's better. Yes. Yes. That possible? yes. All of the above. All of the above. But you're if you're buying a nicer car. But but you're saying like, hey, but you've got to pay, you know, I'm buying a car in Arizona and I'm shipping it to Michigan and I'm saying oh, I've got these transportation costs. But you have to take out what other costs am I am I taking away from that? Um, it's so hard to find the right car. So sometimes you have to go out of your market. You have to, to fish in a bigger pond. Yeah. That's, that's what I've been doing. So yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Um, we have a lot of uh, new car dealers in our 20 groups who have buy here, pay here operations. Uh, very, very few of them are getting into it anymore. But I've asked them from time to time because I, when I first got in the business, we bought every car with a draft at a dealership. I didn't go to an auction. <laughs> sure, never sure. didn't know what one was or what it was for. And they started keeping those cars because they recognized that, hey, there's some profit opportunities in these old trades that may not fit our normal uh, inventory. And I said, so what would it take for you guys to release those cars in the future? And they go, it's never going to happen. <laughs> it's ne- we're, it, we're done. Dang. So just knowing that, just knowing that when you go to a car auction and buy your cars, there's something wrong with that car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's okay. That's, that's, that's okay. okay. That's what we do. It's okay, yeah. but, it, but you have to know that. And you it, can't be angry about it. And, gonna, and it used to be, you, you're, and another thing to that is reconditioning costs have gone up. When we talk about there's something wrong with the car. You know, in the day when you could buy the car that was just freshly traded right. in, maybe there wasn't much wrong with it. But today, if that car's at the auction, it probably is something. And that's where we come in to recondition that car and make sure it's right for our customers. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, in 20 Group, and it, let's just get back to this. <laughs> 20 Group is so important. And um, for those of you don't that have never been to a 20 Group, I, I just invite you to, to talk to NIADA. Come to one and, and see what it's like because it's, no better way to learn. We've been saying that, but there's no better way to learn. No, and if you have questions, um, you can always go to our website, which is nida-education.com or nida-training.com or 20 out.com. It all takes you to the same place, but we have a we have a little fact section in there because we, and of course me in particular, have been doing 20 groups since 2000. Um, we assume everybody knows what they are and people are afraid to ask. Down there, you can find out what they're all about. There's some great little uh, shots of composites uh, where we look at your financial results and we can find the hidden gems. One of the things that I'm most excited about is when I meet somebody like Luke or Jeff and we bring them into one of these meetings and we show them what their overhead per car is or what their inventory turn is and I can show them ways to bring more money to the bottom line without having to sell more cars. It's yeah, everybody's good line. for that, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope you are. I've never had anybody come to a 20 group and say, well, this didn't pay for itself. <laughs> yeah. That's the key, I think, right there. A lot of people look at it, well, I don't have the time to be yep. out of the lot. I don't want the extra expense to fly somewhere and blah, 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 blah. It pays for itself. I can look at, I mean, I can look at just two or three things 
yep. from from Twenty Group, and t- and there's tens of thousands of dollars of change from that. Yeah, mm-hmm. money made, money saved. Oh, yeah, sure. from the ideas. Yeah, yeah. I, I I just think back to what you said earlier, and and I think you can't not know which, especially with buy here pay here, you can't not know which way your ship is going, sure. because in buy here pay here. Man, you, you, you're going down the wrong path for a couple of months or a couple of years and it takes a long time to correct that ship because you've got 24, 36 month notes out there. That's right. And that's painful. That's a painful collection, It's, it's, it's right? a painful lesson. It's a really expensive lesson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's way more than your 20 group dues and travel yeah. than figure that your underwriting went to crap over yeah, a few week month sure. period. Um, and again, I don't, you know, as we look forward, uh, one of the things that we really strive hard with 20 group members is to make sure they do keep steering their ship the right way and don't chase, don't chase bad business because right now, none of us uh, are getting the, the, I lovingly call the cream of the crap customers. We're not getting the $5,000 incomes with a 600 credit score because they're getting done at new car stores. And right. someone says, well, when's that going to end? And I've heard pundits and, you know, the, the, all, all the speakers in the industry talk about a subprime bubble. Well, you know, at five years, I'm tired of it because yeah. I believe this may be the new norm. Um, and if it does, and as I said, and if I'm wrong, it's just all the better. But yeah. we need to plan for it being forever. Right, right, right. And operate now like this up. is your base. You know? <laughs> I don't want to hear that. We can't survive that. I don't know. It'll be easier. This is tough, man. It is tough. It That's, is. Let, let's talk about your role as, uh, sure. as an IADA education director. Sure. Right? Uh, and conventions and things like that you know 20 group is great and, and not everybody is going to take mm-hmm. the time investment I don't think to really to do that sure but you know convention is a good way to get a good taste of it and um, you know I had somebody or somebody the other day I think on the independent dealer uh, Facebook asked well you know is it gonna is there gonna be a lot of buy here pay here stuff at right. this year's convention and maybe people don't know but NIADA bought NABD mm-hmm. uh, a couple years back and just talk about what's going to be going sure. on education-wise. Um, you know what? I, here's the, the convention is great for everybody for several reasons. Uh, we're going to be June 17th through the 20th at Venetian in Las Vegas this year. Uh, our biggest expo hall ever, our largest offering of seminars, workshops. Uh, we have Dave Anderson, who if you've not heard Dave Anderson talk before, him alone would be worth the price of admission. Uh, we've got several good keynote speakers. It's a great place. For me, I always said, well, where else would I want to go if I'm going to buy products or services that I can see 10 DMS systems, 10 GPS providers out there all in one place, Walk, uh, talk to them on, on my time as I want to see them, network with dealers, uh, and get a taste. Because I, 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 granted, I mean, I'm going to do a 50-minute session on capital in this industry. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, conventions, I think, where it starts. You, you, you got to go to conventions, uh, and ours is going to be the biggest and best this year in, in Vegas. We're also going to do a buy here, pay here specific convention in October, the NABD show, which will be in Chicago. Um, we have classes, and all of our classes are listed online with a calendar of, of live events. Uh, we're now creating a subscription-based product for those of you who are small. Maybe you can't travel. Maybe you can't afford to have your collector, your sales manager get out of the uh, dealerships. Uh, we certainly recognize that. I'm going to have some online subscription-based training. We are doing webinars right now. The first ones are rolling out right now. Our job and our duty, besides taking care of you guys in Washington at National, is to develop you and educate you and train you um, and, and try to make you the best you can be. So there are going to be a lot of opportunities now and even more in the future. Awesome. Jeff, what do you have specific for Chuck? You know, Chuck is a, Chuck is a guy that we all know. What, what specific question, what, what does people want, should know about Chuck? I think what's great about Chuck is he has got his finger on the whole industry because of your connections, because mm-hmm. of your traveling, because of your 20 groups. You see it from the largest you know, multi hundred million dollar portfolios to the tiny, tiny hundred thousand dollar portfolios. What are you seeing as the pain point for dealers? I know you'd mentioned a little bit inventory acquisition, a little bit about how this may be the new normal and your sub 500 customer may just be your guy from now on. Be prepared for that. Yep. You know, they may never come back again. Um, What what else are you seeing that dealers need to be prepared for from the, the big to the small? Well, yeah, I direct think, to consumer sure. retailing is that an issue? Do we Absolutely. all need to be? We all need to have digital platforms. Listen, that Auto Nation said they would never uh, deliver cars at home, and now they've rolled out an <laughs> entire platform. Uh, America's Car Mart 
is yeah. going to do home deliveries. Who just um, opened in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you're going to have, I mean, we now need to approve people, but kind of the way they do it in subprime, and you've done subprime so you know, is like, I'm going to get a 10 minute approval online, and it's a real approval, yeah. uh, and get people to buy. Our consumers are looking online. We used to talk about a website as a portal, a gateway to your dealership, and I would argue now that your website is your dealership. Is your dealership, sure. Mm. I mean, you're going to lose or make customers right there. Yeah. They, but when they come to the lot, it's what frustrated me about my own salesman was, I said, when I have somebody who the, my BDC got to the lot, they're buyers. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. kicking tires or looking. If they leave, it should be because we want them to leave. Right. I mean, they don't have the down, they don't have the car, whatever it may be. Everybody else needs to be in a car today. And one of the things that I, I, I it's like, I, you guys spend money, whether it's digital, whether it's more traditional media out there, you're spending your advertising dollars, your marketing dollars. You have to look at your leads like gold. Everybody who comes in there, I, I need every one of them. And I'm amazed, even in my own 20 groups, when I asked you, so how many leads did you get last month? And they say, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, we got one in here that, that, yeah. that did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> how many apps did you get? I don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, this is business development and you're spending money. I love digital marketing I, I, and I love social media marketing, uh, but we want to get better at it. Uh, certainly it's cheaper than TV and radio. Certainly mm -hmm. it's reaching the masses in a better way and a better target out there, but we still have to convert. You know, it's, it's something we talked about not long ago, Jeff, was how um, there shouldn't be a disconnect from your website to your dealership. Yeah. It's got to be one flow. And that I think that's really important. And people say, oh, it's about your payer. No, it's important. Customer, if you can get that customer qualified on your website and on the phone mm -hmm. and they show up at your store, they're, they're good. They're good. They're leaving with a car. My, my, um, my ups this tax time has gone down. But my internet leads have gone up, right? Mm -hmm. And so you see it, you see it right there that most people are going to visit you online before they even walk in the door. So we've got to be we've got to be better prepared at that. I think. Well, I think that and I don't want to interrupt you, Jeff, but I think that kind of ties to we got to be good at everything. Okay, you know it's hard to buy cars, but we got to buy the cars that we need that match our customers' income. A lot of people think, well, I want to go out and buy trucks. I've got one of the largest dealers in America. I've been in business since 1969 in a large metro Texas market has zero trucks on his hmm. lot because t the trucks that they would buy that they felt comfortable doing for three and four years, um, the people can't afford them. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. It's like, look, I'm not going to put people in cars they can't afford. That makes does us no good. So you buy the cars they need. You buy the payments they're going to have based on the down they're going to have. Overhead, the expenses that go into selling each car, you got to be dialed in. And you know, gross profit, I don't even talk about gross profit anymore because it's all air. Charge-offs are air. What I write out checks every month in my overhead to run my business, that's real money. We need to be dialed in on that. We need to be dialed in on our collection. We may say, I, I've shown most people in our composite, we said, hey, last month you approved 55 deals and you did 20. Don't talk to me about another lead. What happened to those 35? Yeah. Yeah. How are you losing them? I, How are you losing them? Those are the kinds of things. That's, those are all efficiencies. That reminds me of that guy. I, you probably remember. I won't say his name, but he was in one of our... That, our DCF9 group and he had a very very high gross profit yep. huge gross profit but very like high it. repo <laughs> rates right <laughs> yeah are you winning? Like, you can make 10 grand a car, but yeah. did you, did did you, you collect, collect any you other? Gotta, you gotta go to the end of the story. <laughs> How's the story yeah, end? You right. know, you can't just look up front. Are you seeing, I know Chuck, I know you're a technology guy Chuck. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing any technology that you're excited about? You know, one of the, one of the, since I, I you know, again, I'll, I'll do one more story. When I first got in this business, we had ledger cards and we yeah. had handwritten credit apps and contracts. Mm -hmm. um, so we've watched all those things go, you know, come into fruition. I got my first DMS in 1991. Um, we, we could actually calculate interest, so we started having interest yeah. bearing loans because we could actually calculate I it correctly. It book. You didn't yeah. it. <laughs> right? And, so, and they go, Well, how bad your charge off? And you just grab this pound. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but the GPS and Starter Interrupt have made us more efficient uh, with the number of collectors we need and how quickly we get our collateral back. Uh, DMSs for a long time became just electronic cards. Mm -hmm. They really weren't much more than that. And now we're in the age where I, in my dashboards, as I look at DMSs out there that are available today and more coming in the future, um, I'm going to be able to, on my phone, wherever I may be, have an update of what's going on in our world at the dealership, mm -hmm. at the auction, in collections, going to the bank, what are my deposits, where are my cars in the pipeline. Uh, I think that's a really big part of it. Uh, and the second part's going to be that we are going to either have to be the people who sell cars online, which means getting people approved and picking a car, not just you've got a 
backhand it, turn down, approve yeah. it, get it here, and then they turn them down later, but really get them approved online, or you will not compete. And, the, and some of this stuff is purely, the technology is there, it's been embraced by the consumers. As our consumers get younger, Okay, I always talk about my wife says, why do you keep talking about millennials? You're the biggest king of Amazon there ever was, and you have Snapchat, and you have Twitter, and you have Instagram. I said, I know, but the reality of it is most of our customers, they live in that world. So we better be prepared for that, or my neighbor who's doing it will get those customers before I ever have a chance. I know you guys have probably seen this. When I used to laugh and I used to teach classes about... Um, inquiries mm -hmm. and I'd have a customer come to our store and they have like 11 inquiries in the last 36 hours yeah. right you started at Lexus and you're like well that was bold <laughs> and you've come all the way down you, know. you, know, you don't ever know <laughs> then they got down to us and go okay you're finally home today if I go online find a car I like go online get approved shopping is essentially it's over it's done yeah so it's velocity yeah. so everything today is going to be we got to be efficient at it but we got to be quicker we're not going to be the guys with that customer so let me ask you that question too, yeah. Jack. When, that makes me think, are you seeing purchasing preference changes with not, I don't want to, when you say millennials, I say, that's that's a mentality. It's a state of mind. Of course right? it is. You've got yeah. it. I know you have it. I'm the same way. I don't want to, I, I don't want to shop around. Nope. I don't want to go to a bunch of places. Nope. I look online. Nope. I see where it's at. I go buy it. If I can't order it online and get it yep. within a day or two, right? Yep. Same thing. Are you seeing those changes from kids where, or, or the buying public where you say, hey, you know, leasing is more attractive, uh, renting, uh, subscription, I mean, subscription yeah. based cars. Do we need on the horizon? Is that something that we need to be aware of? You know, I would tell you that it, we're, well, we're all going to be this one. I don't have to be doing any prediction with the, with a crystal ball. We're all going to be selling electric cars yeah. sooner than you think. Okay. And the reason is that's what they're going to be building. What do you do out here? Yeah, I have an electric car. <laughs> so <laughs> I will tell you that when, when Ford and GM and BMW and Audi and Nissan and Toyota start going down this path of electric cars, uh, we're going to go to them. Now, I will tell you that electric cars, and my owning one, um, is it changes our mechanics. It changes our recon. It changes, you know, we don't know about battery life on a 10-year-old vehicle. That's You know, we know how they are at the beginning. Uh, there's far fewer parts to fix. I mean, there's some upsides to that. But I don't know if that itself shifts it. Um, the autonomous car someday probably will if that ever happens. I mean, my GPS can't get me to my house, so I don't think it's as close as they keep telling me it is. <laughs> but I will tell you that if if you could have an electric vehicle in a fleet that needed no driver, then the Ubers and the Lyft type companies of the world could probably provide services to our customer yeah, at 17 cents per mile versus a dollar 73 yeah. cents a mile. Our customers, and they're not different, we're selfish financially. Yeah. If that makes good sense to them and it's on demand, it's anything they want, boom, it's here, it drives me where I want to go, that's going to happen. I don't have the crystal ball about 2025 or 2035. Mm -hmm. um, but it's coming. It is coming. It's coming. Um, and again, I, I'm the father of a millennial, so I get to talk about it in that regards, because she does have a subscription car, mm -hmm. and I think she's nuts. Because well, to an old guy like a Volvo, yeah, it's okay. like, what are you doing? Dad, it's one payment. Everything didn't care of it. I want to switch it out. I just switch it out. But it's a totally different view of automobiles. Yeah. Uh, and that's happening. It's happening from the type of cars. You see the, the manufacturer saying, no more sedans. Okay, We can't, you know what? I can put the same chassis as a Ford Taurus and I can make it an SUV. It. Yeah, that's right. And I'll buy it. But I'm not buying a Taurus. So those things are shifting. Um, Kids today, I mean, I saw something the other day that 70% of kids who are Generation Z, is that what's after Millennials? Z, I think it's Z's, yeah. will not have a driver's license at age 25. That's 70%. That's crazy. Yeah. That scares me. My, my, my cousin has no interest. He's about, he's no. 15, 14, has no interest in no. getting his license. Yeah, a friend, a friend of mine another day. What in the world? Daughter's 17, wanting to go get her driver's no. license. I was like, what? And, it, and people <laughs> will say, like, well, Chuck, your daughter is different. Yeah, my daughter on 16th birthday drove, got, had a car, got her license, and drove away. Mm -hmm. Kind of a never to be seen again. When we talk about these trends, and with I use millennials a lot because it's fun as a millennial dad, but if we talk about the shifting um, consumer, it won't be everybody. I do envision a world where, just like horse owners, right? Everyone owned a horse in the yeah, 1800s because sure. that's how you moved them around. That's yeah. that was what made you mobile. Now rich people have horses. I believe someday that when those Mustangs are sitting around, those old cutlasses, or those muscle cars, yeah. they'll be held by rich people on a farm, right? Because they're gonna because they want to have those things and they, and they and they have status out there. But for a whole generation and a generation beyond, it's just transportation to them. Yeah. It's, it's not a status symbol the way we look at it. Now, that's mm -hmm. changing. And I think buy here, pay here customers, yes, at today's day, they still want an Impala 
over on Malibu. I mean, mm -hmm. there's still some status yeah, to things, so but it is shifting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you guys have both sold cars. You're like, I can't believe they bought that. Yeah, yeah, sure. We brought in a Fiat. We brought in a couple of cars. I'm going, oh, what do we buy that thing for? And they go, oh, that's all, by the way. I'm not buying Fiat. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because we went from selling, you know, years ago, these during tax time, these large SUVs, just, just yep. moving, moving, moving. Yep. Well, now it's, you can tell that that age is, is moving a little bit and more people want the sedans or the smaller cars that, yeah. or the crossovers. Or crossovers. Cars, yeah. yeah, which is really a car. Sure. I mean, that's that's the it thing. Is like, like it doesn't feel like you know that it's not a minivan. It's not a sedan. Uh, it's a crossover. They'll take it. And I'm like, those things are all okay. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge I think we have is full size SUVs and real trucks mm -hmm. are never going to be in our market. I mean, you've got a few in your yeah, world out there, but for most of us, these trucks start off at seventy thousand, eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Oh yeah, they do. You know, yeah. when's it going to be five thousand? Yeah. yeah. What is more for it's worth having. Exactly. Yeah. So some of those things are going to happen, you know, by default. Um, and I think for those who have been used to going to their local auction and buying cars, um, you better get a little more global yep. mm -hmm. um, and, and having the cars. Um, and then capital, obviously, we're not going to need less. There's nothing out there that says that cash and deal or the amount of money that you're putting in the street at the time of sale is going down. When I first started doing 20 groups, it was $1,800. Mm -hmm. Today, it's $6,800. <laughs> yeah. That's an average. So I want, I want to ask you this question. This has been my own observation. This might be the sure. wrong place to state it, but I see auction volumes going up, right? And I'm just looking at my local Mannheim. We'll rarely go to anymore, but it's going up. Uh, off leases are going up, right? We've had an all-time low sales in, what, 2010? New cars were right. at an all-time low. Right. And in 2015, they were back up to all-time highs, right? So three years later, four years later, those are coming off lease, off rental. So if we have a combination of both off leases increasing, um, maybe a slowdown in the sales area because of mm -hmm. the market, people are not buying cars as much, maybe they're using their Ubers, they're doing this. And if you had a slight tick down in the recession and the repo rate went up, I look at that and I say, be a that's a perfect order. storm for a sure. flood of used cars, right? Sure. Does that math add up? It, it does and it doesn't. That's one of the challenges out there when you listen to economists or you read articles in the magazines out there and they take a particular slant, mm -hmm. like like the number of cars that were coming off lease in the last two years. Okay, So that did flood the markets a little bit with cars. Of course, they I joked that they were the cars that nobody wanted, sure. right? They were, I call them, they were airport rental cars, yeah. which are hard to sell. Cars um, but at the same time, what we're doing in the new car and the subprime uh, areas today is we're putting people out for 72 and 84 months. So the churn, the number of people buying a new car who are paying for their cars mm. has dramatically decreased. Um, so yeah, this year I think they're going to say we're going to be off a couple million in new car sales. But what happens there is new car sales or new car prices went up by one of the highest numbers they've mm. ever gone up this last year. And so what that does is it makes used cars more attractive at every level. Yep. Mm -hmm. So again, we have less of a chance. So there's always lots of things going on at the same time and hard to figure out which one's going to dominate the others. Yeah, yeah, the pecking order, everything gets pushed down. And along with that, I see in the new car uh, groups that I follow, they are they all push leasing. Yeah. Is that... I so mean, is that is that the customer's mentality? Are we all we all lease our phones, right? I, I can't even buy my your, stupid phone anymore. I think it's to keep the payments down. So everything yeah, is payment. Yeah. I mean, the world is that whether in, in, in our town, I'm not sure if it's different than anybody else's town. Um, you know, our Mercedes and BMW dealers, they very rarely will post a price. Right. It's a monthly lease payment, yeah. which a lot of these people won't even qualify for. But our world has become how, and there's and there's some there's an argument for it. How much does it cost me to drive? Yeah. And if I can get that down to a monthly number, it's like a rent payment or groceries or anything else out there. So they're driving that. The problem is that the cars that they continue to build, you know, Camrys are $40,000 and Honda Accords are $40,000. And, you know, I, I have a college educated wife and she goes, how can that payment be $700 a month? I go, well, let's walk through it. And you say the car was 42, you put 7,000 down, it's $35,000 without interest. You divide that by 50 months, it's 700. Yeah. It's sure. math. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the only way they're going to afford 700 dollars Exactly. Yeah. So the only way they're able to get them in the cars with they don't have affordability is to lease them the car for a shorter time at a lesser payment. And in many cases, some of these manufacturers, they take it on the chin three yeah. years later because yeah. mm. they're resorting. They miss, they miss residuals. Yeah. So um, I think what it does say to your point, though, Jeff, mm -hmm. is that do, do consumers care about car ownership? Now, I, I for a short time a few years ago. Uh, ran and, and was a partner in a lease here pay here operation. We leased 300 cars a month. 
Um, and I can tell you, even at buy here, pay here credit score levels, uh, I would lose one or two a month when they knew it was a lease. And we told them from the beginning it's a lease. Mm -hmm. And they're like, look, I need a car today. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the name of my company. Um, car today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so part of it was, it just, you know, ownership is, is kind of a uh, intangible kind of a thing. Right. They're not really, I mean, and you're talking about 48, 54 months down the road, having a piece of paper is not a meaningful thing when you've got to get your kids to school and yeah. you get a job. Yeah. Right. And I think that's changing. Well, I think that's probably about all the time we got, it. Yeah, cool. I think we've taken up a lot of Chuck's time, <laughs> now, haven't we? Someone look at that clicker. <laughs> well, Chuck, any parting words for us, words of wisdom you'd like to leave with our audience? Yeah, I would just tell you that um, I'm not doom and gloom about this business short term. And for me, short term is 10 to 15 years out there. But I will just leave you with this is you got to be your best in all areas of your business or you will be left behind. That's great. That's, that's awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.